didn't see you there. <laughs> okay, you guys ready to get into it? Today we're going to be doing a little q and I uh, posted on Instagram and on Twitter some questions for you guys to ask me or posted a video so you guys could ask me some questions. So I wrote them all down on my phone. So I'm gonna go through about 20-ish of them, give or take about five. Uh, so we're gonna go through those, kind of give you guys an insight into my life since I have nothing else going on since I'm trapped in my room. I could be trapped in the house, but I'm trapped in my room. I got my workout area, protein powders. We have our little TikTok station. We are ready to go. We're gonna go through the first question is favorite monster flavor, which mine personally, just because I like anything of the sugar-free and uh, no calorie line is the ultra whole line. I like the Rosa is kind of my favorite one. The white one's really good. I don't know what the name is of that one, but it's the white one. And I like the Rosa, which is the pink can that just came out. All right, question number two, most embarrassing thing that's happened at the track, which I have this one story. I can't really tell one of them because it's just so embarrassing. But the second most embarrassing story. Um, so I decided last is exactly a year ago during around January. It was a great idea to cut a bunch of weight. And like, I was just training super hard. I was running about six miles every single morning and then going to the gym, doing weights for like an hour to two hours. I was just, I was on it. I was eating like only like 1200 calories a day. And I dropped a bunch of weight, got fitted for my seats, suits, all of that. And then all of a sudden, once the season started, uh, traveling more, just not being able to work out as much. I kind of put all the weight back on, which I put probably around 15 pounds on. And after that, the last race of the season, Kern County Race A, my suit busted open. And I still have both suits. Both suits busted open. I ended up changing over to another suit. That one busted open. It was a sad day, really sad day. So my crew, actually, we were at driver intros. And my suit busted open again. And I remember all I had was a sports bra on. I didn't really have my fireproof undershirt, which you're supposed to wear. And I was like, yo, like I cannot race with my stomach just out in the car. Cause as soon as I hunched over, it'd pop open. <laughs> and so they had, I went like full plank and they ended up lifting me into the car and like slid me in. And I'd like delicately get in my belt. So the officials didn't know that though. So we'll keep that one a secret. And now it's out so that everyone knows. But I've dropped weight again, so we're all good. We're back on track. Favorite candy? That would either be Milk Duds. Milk Duds are when I am kind of want chocolate, which I don't really like like chocolate all the time. I mostly like kind of sour candies. Uh, I do like Sour Patch Kid watermelons. Those are my absolute favorite OGs. For some reason, I just like can eat like a bunch of bags of those ones. And they don't take out like the filling to my cavities like Milk Duds do. <laughs> um, Favorite type of music. So it honestly depends what mood I'm in. Sometimes it's just a depressing day. It's raining outside. I can't do anything. I'm stuck in my room. I've, I've gained a few pounds and we listen to some Lana Del Rey, some Bozzy, um, some stuff a little more depressing. But most of the time, what is on my playlist, I'll pull up Spotify. Okay, so right now on my Spotify account for my kind of like running workout, why I'm working out uh, type music is Savage by Megan the Stallion, the Stallion. Um, we have We Flyin' High, Ballin' by Jim Jones, oh, No Hands by Waka Flocka, My Chick Bad from, by Ludacris. Um, we have Broccoli by Dram and Lil Yachty, Yamborghini High by ASAP Mob. So that's kind of like, I listen to more rap music, super like kind of intense kind of stuff that like when you crank uh, the volume in your Mustang, uh, the bass just like, you can feel it. <laughs> that's the type of music I like. I'm getting into country though. So that is, country is, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Like Jason Aldean, um, some, what's that one guy's name? The one that's like, beer never broke my heart. <laughs> As you can see, I am not a good... <laughs> Luke Combs. That's his name. Luke Combs is good. Someone asked, who is my favorite brother? That would have to be Cole Keys. <laughs> Cole, he's my best friend. Um, I count him as like my brother. Um, he's my OG. My favorite racetrack. So as of now, by all the racetracks that I've raced on, Daytona's been fun. Daytona is a lot of fun. It was a little bit on the easier side of the racetracks to race at, uh, just because you're wide open and it's not... There's not much to it, but Bristol is kind of like the track where I'm like, if I'm going to race anywhere, I had a choice to race anywhere, or if I had to race somewhere twice during the year, it'd be Bristol, just because 
the more aggressive you are with that track, the harder you drive it into the corners, the faster you go, which is more so my driving style. And I, I love over driving corners always. Whenever I go to a new team or something, I always have to explain to them like, hey, like I drive into the corners really deep. Um, I always somehow the car will always be tight. I've never really had like a loose car if if I have. It's just we get sketchy sometimes, but the car is usually I always drive a tightness into the car, which means your car can't really turn. Um, and that's usually just because I overdrive my corners, the entries in my corners. Um, favorite cup driver. I would say favorite cup driver as of now. I've always liked Kevin Harvick. Kevin Harvick's always been kind of like that person where it's like Kevin Harvick's always a reliable one. But I always like Clint Borg. Clint Borg's personality is cool. I feel like he's the last, the last of the older generation of NASCAR to have a awesome personality which nascar needs they really need that and going from that question actually into one of the other ones if i had to have kind of my dream team of what i wanted it'd be to take over at stuart haas racing the number four cup car of kevin harvick which uh, hopefully he retires by the time i come up <laughs> my way into nascar hopefully we make it that far um, but that'd be definitely a dream scenario. That's kind of like my end goal. My life goal is to take over Kevin Harvick's cup ride. Next question is at what age did I start racing? Kind of how I got my start is I saw these kids racing when I was seven years old at my dad's first race and I saw those cars and I begged my parents for one. And so they ended up buying me my first off-road racing truck and it was kind of a hoopty, which once I started winning races and showing that I was really invested in my racing, they started buying me better equipment. And we started getting sponsors, so that was cool. So my favorite workout, uh, I love working out. I feel like workouts a good, working out is a good way to kind of stress relief for me whenever I feel like I'm under a lot of pressure or I feel kind of just like down or unmotivated. I'm like, let's go to the gym. I know you'll feel better after you work out, which it may suck at the moment working out. Um, but I do love working out and I love running. I feel like running is a really good stress reliever for me when I'm just like, I feel all bottled up and I'm just like, I just need to get out of the house. And so I go running usually around four to six miles is my usual running pace. I try to keep it an hour and under um, when I run. But I get asked a lot actually, am I still in school? Cause I am 18, people are like, oh, is she still in high school? Or is she like graduating from high school? So I actually, I went to a private Christian school all the way up until seventh grade. And then after that, I ended up homeschooling for racing because that's when my racing got a little more serious. We we're investing more money into it. I was winning more. And uh, once I started homeschooling, I actually fast tracked two years of my schooling life. I didn't like, I didn't skip it. All I did was did my work quicker. I didn't take any summers off, no spring break, no Christmas break or winter vacation, whatever you call it. I didn't take any breaks off. And so I pretty much just did everything at a quicker rate. And then I also got asked with that, what was my favorite subject in school? Which my favorite subject was math. Math is always, oops, my phone went off. But my favorite subject in school was math. Math has always been easy for me. It's something that I can just kind of, when I see a problem, I can figure it out in my head. I'm really good with numbers in my head um, when it comes to talking and uh, writing down letters. That's not my specialty, so we'll skip that. Uh, Favorite sport other than NASCAR? I love UFC. Absolutely love UFC. I cannot stand ball sports at all. Uh, I can't, I've watched maybe one Super Bowl in my lifetime fully, and that was this last Super Bowl that we had, and I didn't even really watch it fully. I ran to the grocery store midway through, but uh, UFC is my favorite. Uh, second to that, if we had to count like another motorsport, it'd be Supercross. I love Supercross, always watch all of that. But those are the only sports I really watch. Um, next question is favorite cereal. Ooh, cereal. I love that stuff. That's when I was on, when I popped my suit open, I was eating anything I wanted. It was Fruit Loops. We had Lucky Charms, but you don't eat the cereal part. You only eat the marshmallows. If you buy a box of Lucky Charms, you have to buy the big box and you only eat the marshmallows. That's the way to go. So if you want to gain weight, that's my secret. <laughs> Favorite scary movie. Okay, so I haven't watched a lot of scary movies. I usually stay away from that because up until the age I was 16, I slept with my bathroom light on because I was scared of the dark. Uh, so I stayed away from scary movies. Uh, I think the only scary movie I've watched is Lights Out. Lights Out was pretty scary. I remember my bathroom light started turning back on midway 
through the night after I watched that movie. I was like, we're just gonna keep that bathroom light on while I sleep. <laughs> it's a little scary, but now we're back to sleeping in all dark. Um, favorite funny movie? Probably The Hangover. You can't go wrong with that one. I think I just like it because when I go to Vegas, I'm like, oh my God, they were right there. Like that type deal. Balancing a normal life being a pro racer with an average teenager. I, I wouldn't call myself average in a normal in any sense. I'm a little out there. Um, I feel like my personality, I'm just very outgoing and out of the box, as my mom likes to say. And uh, it's hard. It's really hard because at one moment you want to be this serious racer who everything is serious every minute. And then you realize it weighs on. It's really hard. It's really hard to do that 24-7. You have to have a life away from racing. I always, I kind of separate the two. I have my personal life and I have my racing life. And my personal life consists of hanging with, out with my friends. Um, most of my friends, I have a few that live up in Riverside. One of my friends goes to college, Caselyn. She's really my only girlfriend that I have. Um, but it's hard. It's really hard because it's always stressful. You're always trying to please your personal life, people in that world and your friends in your personal life while still balancing being focused on your racing life. And it's, it weighs on me a lot sometimes, but we're getting better at it. <laughs> Typical race day morning. What does that look like for me? So during race day mornings i usually usually the racing we don't have to be to the track till around like 11 sometimes it's pretty late because we have practice the day before so i usually go to the gym at the hotel we're staying at wherever that's at or if we're staying at our motorhome i'll go running uh just trying to get like some type of movement in my body before uh we actually go to the track because i know i'm gonna be sitting in the car a lot kind of under a lot of pressure there's gonna be a lot going on um but when i I realized I made the mistake at Phoenix. So I drink pre-workout every single morning, as you guys can tell. <laughs> it's what keeps me going. It's like my coffee. And so I drink my pre-workout with my first form Opti Greens and Reds. And so that really gives me energy for the day. And I did not do that in Phoenix because the morning started so early. And I noticed as soon as practice was about to start, I got a really bad headache. And I was like, where's my pre-workout? So I had to drink that before practice. Um, and then my headache went away because I have a bad caffeine problem. I love caffeine. Like I can just, I can take four scoops of pre-workout during the day and be totally fine and just be hyped up 24 seven. So that's something I'm trying to work on a little bit, but typical morning routine at home. I usually wake up around seven, eight o'clock. Um, sometimes now my dog wakes me up at six o'clock. So that's nice, but usually around seven, eight o'clock, um, I'll go running or go to the gym. Always make my pre-workout in the morning with my greens before I do anything. Check social media before I do anything. <laughs> um, I lay in bed for probably a half hour on my phone before I actually get out of bed. And then I usually work out, come back, always get my stuff done at home. Uh, sometimes I'll go to the track practice, stuff like that, or drive here. So that's kind of the usual day for me when I'm at home. Can I ride a dirt bike? Ooh, that's, that's the unknown question. Unknown to me, unknown to you. I can... I can ride a dirt bike, I can sit on the dirt bike, I can go, I can shift. Can we hit jumps? No. Uh, we can hit jumps, usually like singles. Uh, we get to doubles, gets a little sketchy, we start seat bouncing off the second one. Uh, usually crash by that time, but I'm gonna make Hayden teach me how to ride a dirt bike uh, by the time of our quarantine ending, which I don't know when that is. Have I ever played any other sports? Yes, I was a big volleyball player. <laughs> Back when I realized I was, I, I love playing sports. I always grew up as super athletic, love being outdoors. And something I love to do is playing volleyball. But then I realized, man, I peaked on my height at 5'4". And these girls were growing up around 14 years old to be six foot. And then I realized I couldn't compete and racing might be the thing for me. So we had to quit volleyball because I was very short. And even being like a libero and stuff, which they are shorter, the girls were still six foot, so I couldn't really compete. <laughs> if I was stranded on an island, what would be the three things that I bring? Three things I bring. I'd bring my 20 pound dumbbells because I have to work out while I'm on the island. Um, next thing, I'd need my phone because I'd have to stay connected with social media. And then my first form, protein bars, salted caramel protein bars. Ooh, I eat those every single day. I try not to eat more than two or three a day because I start getting, they taste like Snickers bars. And so I start getting a little rhythm of like, ooh, these taste good, I'm just gonna keep eating them. So uh, those are the three things I bring for sure. We can leave my brothers at home. <laughs> Last question, final question is, going up the ranks in NASCAR, would you keep as, would you keep being as aggressive as you are now once you get to that higher level? And I'd say when it comes down to that, me being an aggressive driver, I don't, it's not like I'm really trying to be. That's just what's, 
instilled in me because that's the type of racing I grew up around. It's the type of racing that it's what I know. When you have these habits instilled in you, your reactions are a certain way because you grew up that way. And like, it's like, it's like people's personalities. It's hard to change someone's personality when they're tw in their 20s and 30s because that's what they, they form that personality all the way up to that point. And so it's something that I, I, I'm not trying to change it, but also I'm trying to kind of calm down a little bit, gain a little more patience so that we're not overly aggressive because it can put me in bad situations at some points. It helps me at some other points, but uh, it does always, there's always a pro and con to every situation. But other than that, that's about it. It's the last question we have. I don't know how long I'll be stuck in my house or when I'll be able to go back out or see my friends or anything like that. But if you guys like this video, uh, we can do another Q&A or if you guys want to see some other stuff, just hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, and Venmo. So uh, if you guys want more of this type of content, even more Q&As, we can do more personal, more funny, more serious, uh, whatever you guys want, just let me know. Thank you for tuning in. We'll have some cool videos coming out on the Deegan's YouTube channel. So. Be sure you tune back in.